Here's what we did to demo and remove our failing stone veneer. As far as the tools we used, we found that wrecking bars work the best in most situations. This is a little bit of a balance because the longer the bar you have, the heavier it's going to be, so you're going to get tired a little bit faster as you work with that. Likewise, though, the shorter the bar is, the less weight it's going to have and the less force you're going to have, so you're going to wear out faster with that. In our case, we found that a 24-inch to 30-inch bar had the best balance for us. As far as other tools you'll need, uh, pry bars are great to help you get started and also will help you remove nails and staples that are sticking out. Using hammers to break up the mortar bed we found was also a good technique in some cases as well, so it's always good to have different options available to you. In addition to the typical safety gear, we also ended up purchasing a safety harness, and you'll see why that is later on in the video. To protect surfaces from getting damaged, we used a combination of old boards on old plywood or OSB in order to protect the ground. To protect glass, we either used large pieces of styrofoam or thick cardboard boxes that we nailed above the windows, for example, by using some plastic cap nails. When renting a dumpster, make sure to disclose that you're getting rid of construction materials and specifically what type. Some companies and landfills can be a little bit weird when it comes to construction debris, so this will help make sure you don't have any issues when they come to take the dumpster back. Also with stone, it's going to be heavier than it is large, so make sure you rent a dumpster that can handle the amount of weight you need rather than base it off of size. All right, so to figure out how big of a dumpster we need, how much weight basically we're going to be getting rid of in a dumpster, I need to figure out how much this stuff weighs per square foot and then I need to multiply that by the total number of square feet that we have uh, in order to get a rough estimate for how much weight there is here. So I need to figure out about, um, I've already figured out how much a square foot is of the stone veneer. Now I need to figure out how much this mortar bed weighs so I can get a total estimate as to how much weight everything is. Okay, so it looks like this is gonna be about five pounds a square foot. I might figure five and a half pounds just to be safe. And then I'm gonna multiply that by, again, the total number of square feet we have on the front of the house to get the weight of the mortar bed that we're going to dispose of. While we waited for the dumpster to arrive on demo day, we started by piling up debris on a tarp first, and then we ended up transferring that debris to the dumpster after it showed up. Since the area we're working with had a maximum height of about 25 feet, we used a variety of different techniques to reach that height. For the things that were lowest to the ground, we used a combination of ladders and baker scaffolding. And then to reach the higher areas, we ended up running a lift in order to reach the very top. And when it comes to reinstalling the stone, we ended up doing something a little bit differently and went with some mason scaffolding, but I'll save that for another video. If you rent a lift like we did, make sure you get one that's towable, because if not, you're gonna have to have a trailer that can haul it as well. In addition to checking the maximum work height for the lift, make sure you also look at the horizontal outreach as well to ensure that you can actually reach the front of your house from where you're planning on putting it on your property. To speed up the process of getting debris and tools up and down the lift a lot faster, we ended up going with a five gallon bucket and a simple rope attached to the top rail. As far as other tips are concerned, sometimes we found it was easiest to pull the stone veneer off of the mortar bed first, and then other times we found it was easier to just leave it attached to the mortar bed and then pry everything off together. For us, this varied depending on the area we were demoing and working with, and some sections of the stone uh, wasn't adhered to the mortar bed fully, and it was a lot easier to just remove the stones first. In other areas, though, they wouldn't come off, so we had to insert the wrecking bar between the mortar bed and the tar paper and pry up in order to get everything off of the front of the house. This is just going to depend for you like it did for us, so just be prepared to change up your technique if one way stops working and switch to something else that does work. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. Demoing the stone was a lot of work, but in the end, by using different techniques and tools, the job went pretty well. It took us about four days to complete the demo work, and that was having three people, two doing the demo, and one doing cleanup on the ground. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.